All praise is due to Allah, Lord of the worlds, who says in his glorious book, Cast not yourselves into destruction with your own hands, and do good. Surely Allah loves the doers of good. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and that our master, Prophet Muhammad, is his slave and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, his household, companions, and upon those who follow him till the day of judgment. Allah the Almighty has favored man to all other creatures by granting him mind, which is the basis of human's responsibility, and the instrument of thinking, reasoning, and contemplation. Allah therefore blames those who do not make use of these bounties, as he glory be to him says, Do you not use your reasoning? And will you not reflect? Allah also says, but none will understand them, meaning his signs of creation, except the people of knowledge. And also says, We have made our signs clear to you, so that you may fully understand. Allah also says, Truly in that are signs for people of understanding. Al-Hasan al-Basri brilliantly said, If mind was a commodity, to buy it would be very expensive it is therefore astonishing that some people pay money to buy, to buy something that would spoil their minds as intellect reasoning and thinking are very very valuable things in Islam the Sharia has put various means of protection to safeguard mind it has prohibited the consumption of anything that would harm mind or render, render people unconscious Thus, Allah says, O believers, intoxicants, gambling, idols, and drawing of lots are decisions, uh, for decisions are all evils devised by Satan. So avoid them so that you may be successful. Whenever the Prophet took an oath of allegiance of his companions, he used to say, Swear allegiance to me that you shall not worship anything besides Allah shall not steal, shall not commit fornication, and shall not consume intoxicants. The Prophet's statement of you shall not consume intoxicants is a general one that covers any kind of intoxicants, regardless of its name. Therefore, similar to wine in its prohibition is any narcotic that drives people unconscious, whether through drinking, sniffing, or injection. The Prophet established a fixed standard that applies to all times, places, circumstances, and people. This principle reveals the nature of wine and all intoxicants. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Every intoxicant is khamr or wine, and every intoxicant is unlawful. In this way, it becomes clear that the word khamr covers any intoxicant, no matter what name people give to it, and whether it is a solid substance or a liquid one. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, if a large quantity of any beverage is intoxicating, then a small amount of it is prohibited. And he also said, Some of my nation will shortly drink wine, calling it by other names. So, to deter people from approaching wine in any form, either through drinking, selling, or processing, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Allah has cursed wine, its drinker, server, seller, buyer, presser, the one for whom it is pressed, the one who delivers it, and the one to whom it is delivers, delivered. The Prophet, peace be upon him, also said, He who believes in Allah and in the hereafter should not sit with a group of people where wine is served. Islam forbids drugs in order to safeguard individuals and the society. Because addiction causes many dangers that harm the addict and negatively affects the safety of the community. 
Intoxicants, of course, affect one's mind and make people lose their prestige and politeness. This is why Abu Bakr used to avoid drinking wine even before Islam. The reason for that was that he once passed by a drunkard who was holding excrement in his hand, putting it close to his mouth and then throwing it because of its bad smell. Abu Bakr said, this man doesn't know what he is doing, and therefore Abu Bakr abandoned wine drinking forever. According to one narration, Abu Bakr was sitting with some of the companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and he was asked, had you drunk wine before Islam? Allah forbids, Abu Bakr replied. He was asked again, for what reason, he replied, I wanted to preserve my honor and prestige because when one gets drunk, he corrupts his honor and stature. Upon this, the Prophet, peace be upon him, commented, Abu Bakr said the truth. Abu Bakr said the truth. Uh, it goes without saying that reality proves that drug abuse and addiction lead to the collapse of family, the devastation of its members, and the absence of human values and feelings. This in turn leads to the spread of many negative phenomena in the society, such as sexual harassment, the increase of divorce rates, and more family disintegration. All this in turn increases crimes of different forms, including theft, killing, and rape, as the addict gives no heed to his actions or the consequences of his crime. All that he cares about is how to get the drugs in any way and by any means. So let us wonder how many wars broke out because of drugs how many rich people turned poor because of drugs and how many healthy people fell sick because because of drugs and let's ask how many honorable men were humiliated because of drugs how many cases of divorce were caused by drugs how much sorrow did it cause to its addicts how many trials and afflictions were brought forth because of it it is indeed the main reason behind all evil deeds and the key to all kinds of evil. A thing which is recorded in the Prophet's piece of advice to Abu ad when he be pleased, when he may Allah be pleased with him, said, "Don't drink wine, for it is the key to every evil." Also, Uthman ibn Affan, may Allah be pleased with him, is reported to have said. Keep away from wine, for it is the mother of all evil. Addiction is undoubtedly one of the main reasons for educational, moral, social, and economic deterioration. In addition, it causes so many physical and psychological diseases, including, among others, anxiety, depression, tension, memory disorders, short-term memory loss, introversion, feelings of depression, and schizophrenia, to name a few. This makes it incumbent upon us to combat and resist this fatal danger. In truth, targeting young people through addiction and drugs amounts to targeting the entire country and amounts to weakening its elements of strength, as well as undermining its good values and morals. The danger of drugs is truly so serious that a, mo a moment will undoubtedly come when its addict will turn from a good man into a dangerous person who may rob, kill, or even trade with his religion to get what relieves him. Which constitutes, of course, a scene of madness, a thing which requires intervention to protect the addict from the evil of his own self and to protect his family and the, in the entire society from his evil. We are in a dire need for every one of us to shoulder their responsibilities towards our young people and sons, each in his position, 
starting from the family and its educational rule, passing to schools and universities and their educational rule, and ending up with the participation of the religious institutions of and the different media outlets, so as not to let our sons fall prey to addiction and drugs, because the danger is very serious, and the price is their minds, physical and psychological health. So let, let us all stand together to bring up a good generation enjoying the good morals and the ability to make development and progress. A generation that's fully aware of the dangers threatening the country. Now I ask Allah for forgiveness for me and for you. All praise is due to Allah. And may Allah's peace and blessings be upon the sale of prophets, our messenger Muhammad and his family and companions. Muslim brothers, on the occasion of launching the Water Rationalization Week this year, we remind ourselves of the blessing of water, which is one of Allah's most important gifts to us. For it is the essence of life and living beings and the most important source of for progress and prosperity. Allah the Almighty says, And we made from water every living thing, and you see the earth barren, but when we send down upon it rain, it quivers and swells, and grows something of every beautiful kind. Islam attaches great importance to water conservation, and thus orders us to rationalize its consumption to the extent that it declares extravagance in the consumption of water as a breach of the rights of others. When a companion came to the Prophet peace be upon him to learn ablution from him, the Prophet instructed him to wash every part three times and then said, this is wudu. Whoever does more than that has done badly done to extremes and done wrong. Also, when the Prophet peace be upon him passed by the great companion Sa'd ibn Abi al-Waqqas, may Allah be pleased with him while performing a pollution, the Prophet said to him, what the extravagance in the use of water, Sa'd, why? He replied is there extravagance in wudu o messenger of allah he said yes do not be extravagant in the use of water even if you are performing ablution from a running river islam views water as a national treasure for all people thus no one shall be denied access to it which is why the prophet peace be upon him said muslims have common share in three things grass water and fire showing the importance of water the prophet peace be upon him said whoever digs a well shall receive reward from allah on the day of judgment when anyone from the jinn men or birds drink from it he peace be upon him also said seven things the reward of which will reach the deceased in his grave knowledge which he learned and then spread a righteous son whom he leaves behind a copy of the quran that he leaves as a legacy a mosque that he built a house that he built for wayfarers a canal that he dug or charity that he gave during his lifetime when he was in good health in conclusion, we stress that polluting water and the wasteful consumption of it is an act of corruption which is divinely prohibited. Allah the Almighty says, and do not cause corruption upon the earth after its reformation. In truth, a few drops of water can save lives and thus are equivalent to a defined amount of money. So, to lose it, means undermining the uh, important blessing that we should take care of for this we all should thank allah for this ble blessing through keeping it for expressing gratitude to allah for his blessings is a main reason behind the continuity and increase 
Allah says, and remember when your Lord proclaimed, if you are grateful, I will surely increase you in favor. O oh Allah, we inv invoke you to protect Egypt, its people, youth, army, police, properties from all evils.